Hello, everybody. Thank you for having us today with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who is today in the city of Atlanta. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for having us today and for coming and do this show that is uh, an awesome show that we have every Thursday in English for our audience that don't speak other languages. Um, but we are always excited when we have the time to talk to you and to ask you some questions about your experience and about what is going on in the immigration world. How are you doing today? I'm very good, Mr. Hua. Good. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. It's a pleasure to have you today. And well, Ms. Wong, talking about many, many stuff and many things, uh, one of the concerns that people have right now is what's going on in the south, uh, in the south border of the United States of America <clears throat> and how the immigration system is working right now that uh, there are a lot of changes, but some, some things seem not to be working 100% correctly. So yes. what is your thought about this? Yes. So basically, I really think that's why I keep saying, and I know I also came to America, that something about a southern border doesn't make sense. Immigration in America is in accordance with the law, all right? So America have laws. We have tax laws, we have immigration laws, we have antitrust laws, we have merger and acquisition laws. But right now, immigration is so inflammatory between the right wing and the left wing and the January 6th and all the stuff and also the midterm election and the Democrats and the Republican, that immigration is like a football, it's like a bouncing ball, you know, it's the base or something that goes left, it goes right. I mean, who knows what's going on? But in reality, a lot, a lot of people actually are suffering continuation what Trump was doing because Trump really hired a lot of people to put in place a position in the courts and immigration. And now even though Biden is coming in and he really wants to change, but whatever changes he make, the court strike. We have cases from Congo, from different countries, Venezuela, that's really not heard. People filed asylum five, six years ago, it's still pending there. You know, and now they're yeah. talking about new initiative for people who came after May of 2022 to expedite hearings within six months. I mean, you need to take care of the people who's in here forever. You couldn't just keep playing to the uh, politics or playing to the newspapers, you know, the media and stuff like that. Yes, and yeah. Ms. Wong actually, um, I have a question coming from that. Uh, what is the difference between the south border and the north border with Canada? That's awesome. That's a very good question. In America, we only have two contiguous countries. In the north is all Canada. Everywhere north Canada, the Canadians come to America, they don't need a visa. So they just come, American people like us, we go to Canada for Chinese food, we go to Canada to shop, we go to Canada to go to see, you know, take a train or something. We don't need a visa. On the other hand, though, from the southern border, you have only Mexico that that's contiguous to uh, Arizona, California, and Texas. So those are the borders. And so from the southern border, Whoever comes, they all need visas. Mexicans need visas, Canadians don't, El Salvadorians, um, Haitians, Cubans, everybody need a visa. So in the past, actually it started like, uh, that's why Reagan started with uh, more than a million people who got green cards and then Anastia, and then Clinton came in, three strikes, you're out. Anybody who have any drug charges, the exception of which is 30 grams of marijuana for possession. So even though you may have 29 grams of marijuana for possession with intent to distribute or to sell, it does not fall under the petty theft or the marijuana exception, the drug exemption. So all these presidents were trying to stem the southern border coming up. It just maybe it's more the newspaper, the Googles right now. It's just mass problems. At least years ago, it did not affect the processing times of America. Work permit takes about three months, three weeks, three months, six months. Now work permit is taking, I don't know, an extension of an old green card is taking 14 months. I mean, that's unheard of, you know, it's historically bad. And what worse is 
America now started premium processing. So if you want something faster, you pay them another twenty five hundred. I mean, why? I mean, we pay our our files, we pay tax, and just because the government should work like a driver's license bureau, to, should work mm-hmm. like any government agency to charge us more. I mean, what is this? Money is not everything. The government should work for the justice and for the rights of the people. That's why America is the best country in the world. We're not Europe. We're not England, who has high inflation. The Queen just died. We are America. It's just getting ridiculous, I think. Well, and that's interesting how um, everything is changing in the American world, in the American country. Immigration. Immigration is a global phenomenon right now. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody in the world is called nomad or migrant. Uh, is like people from Europe want to come to the United States. Mm-hmm. People from the United States want to go to Canada. Right. People from Canada want to go to Europe. Um, <laughs> British people want to go around the Difference. world. Right. So yeah. it, it's it's a lot of people traveling. And now is, there's another phenomenon when we talk about working from home. Mm-hmm. So um, working means right now that I can work for a a company in France and I am actually located in the United States. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about that, Ms. Wong, what happens if I I find a job in the United States, but I am located in Spain, for example? That's interesting because I already have two (laughs) clients just this morning in Atlanta. So it must be, yeah, asking me the same question. Yeah, because they have only work permit in America. They're waiting for their green cards. Now they say, well, they filed for parole. 13 months is no, not here. So they said, could I just work here even without papers for uh, my boss who wants me to, it's a Belgian company, but I have no papers here. But they could get me a Belgian work permit. So even though I'm fiscally, so this is, you are the third person. It must be something in the air that people are thinking about that because yeah. people want American workers because we couldn't get jobs here, you know, and we have no papers. So absolutely, because you're not, as long as you don't violate the Belgian law, that a foreign person, wherever that person is in England and America is working there and you're okay because you're already in America with or without papers. Yeah, and that's true. And if you have any other questions, please don't forget to call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. The attorney, Margaret W. Wong, who has uh, worked in the immigration field for over 45 years, and she started in 1977, and uh, <clears throat> it's an awesome experience getting up to date all the time, ter- uh, reading the news, working with the immigration judges, um, helping even the Supreme Court of the state of Ohio to build the most innovative building for a Supreme Court. So that's awesome, Ms. Wong, and thank you for all you do. Uh, One more question before we start with the questions from our audience. And this is a question that somebody asked me yesterday. This person was a commercial pilot for an airline. Um, She's from Panama. She speaks English, uh, but she got married to a Honduran person. Mm -hmm. So uh, she used to come all the time flying to the United States, but because of her husband, that he didn't have a visa, he wanted to come to the United States. So they moved. She entered on a visa and he entered illegally or enter without inspection. Mm -hmm. So they are already, they have already been two years in the United States. Mm -hmm. She didn't file for student visa or for asylum because she cannot do that from Panama. So what what would be a, a, a relief for them so in the any future. So anytime you are less than 180 days out of status, but the Honduras, you know, she he entered elite, I mean, without inspection, without parole, without, the whole thing is you have to be admitted and inspected or paroled. But in this case, no inspection, no admitted or no parole. So he's completely out of status. Aside from asylum, there's really very little he can do, but he's missed also missed a one year because of apply for asylum, you need to file within a year or so. But he could still apply and potentially get the work permit, 
but you need a good story. Otherwise, he'll be stuck with a deportation order, a removal order. For her, it's a legal entry overstay because in the meantime, I'm so sorry for her. Why? For a love? I mean, you know, she came with the six months. I feel the same. And then she has such a great job, you know, that job working for the airlines. They can travel in the world. Oh my gosh. And, you know, this is a sad story, but talking about another case, we have a client who, um, at the age of 17, uh, married an, uh, a person. Um, actually, it's really not an immigration case. She was actually Miss Ohio. Um, her parents spent like thousands and thousands of dollars grooming her from, from a Miss like Sugar Heights, Miss Rocky River in Ohio to this and this and this became a Miss Ohio. And then got married because you cannot run for a beauty pageant and getting married. So her whole life went down. In the meantime, she was not happy. She divorced his wife. Her parents are so mad at her. They were sort of estranged. Now she's on to her third husband, all this for love. And I'm saying, what's love got to do with it? You know, so your story reminded me of my friend. So uh, on your case, it's a, uh, as long as she's not out of status for 180 days, it should which she won't, I know she won't, because I won't. But if she's less than 180 days out of status, she can leave back to Panama, try to get a new visa to come back, or try, if she has university level education, come back with an H1B visa, but that's really the only way. Because if she leaves and more than 180 days out of status, she cannot come back in three years. So if she leaves more than 130 days out of status, she cannot come back in 10 years. So that's another thing. She can only do asylum in Panama. What asylum? She had a good job, you know? Yeah. So um, okay, he is. Um, it's yeah. interesting. It's sad. Yeah, when she told me that she had been here for over one year, and now she's working in a painting company. Um, her husband is struggling. She is struggling. But Did she regret. Um, she didn't say nothing oh. that she regrets, but uh, I could tell she's not happy in the job she's doing right now. That's because they, she has no papers, <clears> and people take advantage of. You know? Yes, because she speaks English, and she's a very nice person. And she was asking me about some stuff, but, um, but I wonder why the husband or the boyfriend would even ask her to do that. Because I think a lot of times people like us we don't talk about how hard it is. So people see America on TV, and also she used to fly. She would come on a tourist visa. She yeah. stay in a nice hotel. You know, it's all hotel paid. The government paid. You know, the airline paid. So I don't think people see how hard we work. Because by the time you make fifteen, twenty dollars, or fifteen is a lot of money. I mean, I used to make. 25 cents an hour, that's 50 years ago. But now minimum wage, how much? 14, 15, 16, you know, so someone like her, maybe $18. By the time you pay taxes, like $10. And then by the time people, you know, make you work overtime and don't pay you is another, oh, it's sad. Yeah. Okay, if you have any questions, please don't forget to call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. The attorney Margaret W. Wong has offices in nine cities of the United States, Atlanta, Columbus, Chicago, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Jigna Patel is asking this question. My friend applied for U visa in 2017. How long will it take to get U visa? That's a very good question. Right now, they stopped approving cases by January, February of 2017. I have not seen, I've seen some RFVs uh, in July or August of 2017, but on approvals, it's getting harder. Um, on the other hand, make sure your friend got the C-14 work permit. So make, uh, first, you need to check the filing. Or if you don't have a filing, do a FOIA as the old lawyer. Make sure there's a receipt notice of the C-14 work permit. Under Trump, a lot of lawyers don't do C-14 because one I waste four hundred and ten dollars, and you don't get it because Trump doesn't give four visas. But under Biden, we are it's a new law. We are getting work permits between nine months to one and a half years for four years on the C fourteen. That's what you want for now because you cannot control what you cannot control. The approval of U visas is totally stuck. That's just a lot of fraud, a lot of problems. But the C fourteen is pretty fast. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And don't forget the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Uh, Ms. Wong, uh, I brought my children from El Salvador 
through the border. I have asylum pending and my husband is a citizen of the United States. Can he file for my yes. kids? Yes. As long as the kids are under 18 years old, not now. But so let's assume you married your husband when the kids are all 12, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. Then absolutely the husband can do an I-130 for you. And the husband needs to do separate I-130 for the kids. If they're under 18 before they left America, they don't even need a 601A. They need to leave the country and come back with a green card. So they could leave before the age of 18. They can come back anytime. So as long as they come back before the age of 21, they'll get the green card but at least you don't need a 601a but even a 601a because the kids have you as a stepfather and if the mom by then got green card the mom so no problem stepfathers can do 601a so this is a very very good case okay. but make sure the kids in the meantime get a work permit so i presume since the mother is in asylum proceeding make sure the kids <clears throat> join the mother and since the mother brought the kids the kids are not an uncompanied minor so um, these are all little things that you need. It's not just filling out a form. It's really macro manage the whole case. How fast can I get the kids? If you don't need a 601A waiver, it takes only about one and a half, two years uh, to get the green card. And kids never lied. So it's not like the mother. The mother may be stuck with the 6E because illegal transport. Because any time Latino countries, you came together with children, I always like to separate the interview with the children and the mom. Because if you go together, they'll ask the kids, oh, how did you come? Kids don't know. They say, oh, my mom from me oops 60 is okay because it's children it is not like a nephew or niece you, it's just you're stuck there for another one and a half years for another 601 waiver so even though we won the 601a so separate them get the kids out first and a mother do later okay thank you so much no, Ms. Ron, for this answer don't forget the phone number is 216-279-3984 216-279-3984 and they are uh, adding that they came on their own they are five and seven. Whoa. Good job. So make sure during the interview, ask if they ask who brought you, just say uh, either I don't know, but that's not enough answer. You know, don't say mom. All right. Because uh, you're under oh, five and seven. By then, the stepfather could bring them back for the interview in less than. So before 10 year old, they'll get the green card. So uh, you don't need a 6018. These are very good cases. And you don't need the mother's green card approval before you do the kids. They are separate cases. I would do them right away. These are very good cases. Okay, thank you so much. As well, don't forget the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. In August, I filed the advanced parole because I need to see my dad who is very sick. I have DACA, no criminal record. I never left the country since 2005, the year I came with my mom. Now I received a letter that uh, last week saying I need to do fingerprints. Good is job. this normal? Very normal. What would be the next step after the uh, fingerprints? The, for, the parole for DACA right now is taking anywhere between three to nine months. Parole for asylum is the promise. Of, we have cases that's pending for 13 months. It's not approved yet. But no problem. Go do exactly what they tell you. Do. I suspect your parole will be approved. And it's nice to get parole because if you enter undocumented, now you have parole. So one day, any legal entry kids have precedence over non-legal entry kids when they apply for green card. So absolutely wait for the parole. Go visit your family and come back. Now you're a legal entry over state DACA kid. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no so uh, please uh, don't don't get desperate. Just wait. And if you need more information, just call Ms. Wong. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Um, do we have any update on the Honduran TPS? It's ending this December. Today, being the Independence Day of Central American countries and Mexico, there's a proposal to include Guatemala and extend the other TPS. What do you think about I, I'm 99 percent Honduras. You're talking about Hurricane Mitch. Uh, Honduras only have one TPS as Hurricane Mitch. El Salvador had two TPS. I'm pretty sure Honduras and TPS uh, and El Salvador TPS will get extended. Guatemala never had TPS, and I don't think it will do it now. I think it's just another empty promise from a congressman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just think that they will give an update just the day before right. the That's expiration right. of, the, right. of the Honduran TPS. Just like Venezuelans, um, it was expiring on 
September the 10th or the 9th in this case, and they just gave the directions on the website the day before. That's right. So they, Same with any other countries. Yeah. Yeah. So please just don't des don't despair and uh, just wait until December and see what happens with this. Uh, applications or this TPS for Honduran people. Um, we have another question here that we are receiving on our inbox. And David is asking, um, I live in Spain. My wife is from uh, Central America. Uh, or no, or Mexico, she has Mica or Mica, M I C A. She's in the United States. We have two children there. She's in California. And I would like to know if you could help me do the tramitation of the documents. So, what's Mica? I don't know what M I C A is. Um, is that an illness or is that a. No, I think it's a kind of status. There's no such thing as Michael. I know my mm. immigration job. Yeah. Yeah, let me see if that's yeah. the. But basically, you still live in Spain. So uh, Spain have a visa waiver for 90 days. So you're talking about coming in, leaving, coming in, leaving. Uh, um, it's It says it's immigration, um, migrant and immigrant community action project. I don't know what that is. Uh, but it could be a U visa, I don't know. But depends on whatever visa she has. Maybe when she get the green card, then she can sponsor you because uh, family 2A is all current. So if she filed out in 30, um, and I'm sad you're not from Central America because of the CAMP program, because Vice President Harris start, restarted the whole CAMP program. But I don't necessarily think it's very well working because I've been sending clients over to the not-for-profit agencies and they all tell them they cannot help them. So I'm amazed that the government is giving these agencies a lot of money to help these poor people. So, um, but not knowing what MICA is, if you can explain that to me, I'll see. Because if they have a status, then you could be included. But Spain is no no problem because you have Esther to come back and forth. Yeah, um, I found it. It's a, I don't know why they call that that way. Maybe it's a Spanish thing that they changed it. But it's a boarding crossing card. Oh, the BCC. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's so BCC that's in a, English. Right, right. That's a that's BCC. Always. Okay, okay. That's a border crossing. So that card is only good for six months. And it depends because there are two types of border crossing. It's, so, for example, you never went through the checkpoint. So a lot of people, so you have to just go through a checkpoint of 100 miles or something to give you I-94. So sometimes if you're lucky, you came through the border they let you come you know it's only for shopping for one or two or three days then uh, for example from there you get on an airline to come into america you don't get the i-94 so i don't know how long your wife is here if he had she had been here more than three four months six months i'm pretty sure she's already out of status so um but in the meantime, if you want to come back and forth, go ahead and do it. Every two years, you need to pay the $12 and get a two-year extension of your, on your visa waiver. And make sure at the airport, and I personally don't like Los Angeles airport. I much prefer San Francisco. Depends on where they are in California. Um, depends. I've heard Miami is very good for Latino company in Spain. So it depends on what airport you I don't like Chicago airport because I think they're pretty tough. I also don't like those Dubai airports. stop entry because you do have family ties in America. Um, but as long as you come and visit uh, back and forth should not be a problem. Just make sure they don't cancel. If they cancel at the airport uh, your your visa waiver program uh, because your wife may be here, maybe not here, then uh, you should say I voluntarily withdraw admission. So at least it's not an expeditious removal. It's just voluntary withdrawal. Then after you go back to Spain, maybe after a year, do the DS-160, apply for a tourist visa. Sometimes they'll be approved because they can see from the computer you came, you left, you came, you left, and you never violated, you know, American immigration laws. I won't be too concerned about it. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And um, I have one last question. This person is asking, my father um, 
was married to a lady in uh, Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, they got divorced a long time ago, and he got married to another person in the United States. She was an American citizen. She gave him documents. But they, uh, they broke up. They separated very long time ago, over 20 years ago, and he doesn't know where she is. He doesn't know how to get divorced or he doesn't know where, uh, he even forgot her name. He's already 85. Is he a citizen now, a green card? He's a green card. Through the second so, wife or the first wife? Through, through the, second, the wife. second wife. So I presume the question is, she got the green card through the second wife. So if you do a FOIA, you'll find out who the I-130 was filed. I don't know if she went back to marry the second. So I presume because you're the daughter of the first wife. So maybe they're still together. You know what? She's He's 85. Why do you care? Why do you care about getting him divorced and get back to your mother? Even if she he gets back with you. Maybe I'm overreading the case. I have a lot of these cases. What country are they from again? Colombia. Colombia. Colombia people do it. Mexican people don't divorce someone, marry someone, and forgot who they are, live back. You know, he's 85. I would let things go. I would not even bother with divorce. I'm pretty sure the girl already divorced him, and the girl was remarried like five times. And check what country that girl, I would not do anything. Let sleeping dog lie. I know you love your father. You want your father maybe to remarry your mother before he passed. Either don't do anything or do a FOIA, find out the girl's name, and just do a, a, a divorce from that girl. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that girl probably on her own do a divorce, did a divorce. All you need yeah. is a FOIA. You don't need a lawyer. You can get yeah. your own FOIA. But it will take about four months to nine months. But my suggestion is depends on why you need that divorce, why you need to know that girl's name. She has it. He has a green card. So if he wants to be a citizen, oh, then you need the girl's name. Um. Just that, see that's what, actually right. the question. The that question is a citizen. Okay, he then wants you to do, do the that. FOIA. Because on the form they ask, what's the first wife, what's the second wife, you know? And make sure the first wife and his address mm -hmm. was no longer together all these years because immigration is not stupid. Colombians are very, very smart people. And we do it all the time 20 years ago because remember 911 came in, Homeland Security 02, 03, 20 years ago is it's probably before 9 So in those days, they don't even check fingerprint. They don't even check if you were legally divorced from the first wife. Those were the easy days from Colombia. So, and congratulations that your father already have a green card. Okay, thank yeah. you so much, Ms. Wong. I actually spoke to this gentleman, and he, he said to me that he wants to become a citizen because uh, he's missing a lot of benefits with yes, his the old Medicare age. And stuff yeah. like that. I would do a FOIA, and you know, if not, see where they got married, if he remembers, and then and then go to the same court and just you don't even need a lawyer. Just call the uh, in Ohio. We have a divorce court. Uh, it's in the same building as the probate court. Check where is that divorce court. Just call them. Just say you know so and so so and so. They're not as interested in privacy because your father is 85 see in immigration they're worried about you know in medical is hipaa in immigration is uh, the privacy thing that's why i do that for you but it'll still take four to nine months okay thank you so much Ms. Wong, for your time um we have gone <laughs> over over the time that we uh, are supposed to go and we have a lot of people waiting today for Ms. Wong. so thank you so much Ms. Wong. um the audience uh we love you so much and we appreciate everything you do for all the people and for us having this show and looking forward to see you next time and thank you for coming to atlanta thank you, thank you so much and for you don't forget to call the phone number is 216-279-3984 216-279-3984 the attorney margaret w Wong with over 45 years of experience thank you so much thank you.